I'd like to salute you <clears throat> with the Islamic salute that we always say in the beginning, peace and the blessings of God be upon all of you. 10 years after the attack, the pain is still fresh in our hearts and in our minds. This day will be forever marked with tragedy, sadness, and loss. Our cond condolences go always to the relatives and the beloved of the beloved ones and the victims of the victims of September 11. During these 10 years, we as a nation and the Muslim community, we have seen it all. We have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. We have seen the ugly when I saw, just by chance, what happened in September 11 alive. Same moment, same second, I was shocked. There is nothing worse than this attack that claimed the life of 6,000 innocent people in one of the most horrific acts of mass murder that started, unfortunately, our new millennium. It did not stop there. After years of September 11, we have seen loss of 3,600 of our soldiers overseas, and 1 million Iraqi and 200,000 Afghani. All of them, they were lost as collateral damage in our fight against terrorism. We as a Muslim community, we have seen the bad. People think that September 11 is the time where we come together once a year to talk about it. We as a Muslim community, we live it every day. We live it when a man on the street tell my wife or my daughter, take off your scarf or go home, you don't belong here. They forgot that 40% of the Muslim community, they were born in this country and they have no home else except America. We have seen the worst in these years when those people attacked the Twin Tower. They did not only destroy it, they destroyed the image of Islam, the image of the peaceful religion in which every chapter says, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. The image of a very peaceful religion in which Prophet Muhammad said in one of his famous sayings about a man who mistreated his, uh, his, his dog, he said he will go to the hill of fire, and the woman who treated her cat in a very well way, she will go to heaven because of treating an animal. People don't differentiate between people of terror and people of religion, people of faith and people of the state of the mind of the terrorism. People forget that Islam says in the Quran, chapter 532, if anyone kills a person as if he kills all mankind, if anyone kills a person as if he kills all mankind, well, if anyone saves a life as if he saves all mankind. They forget also that it is mentioned in the Bible, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And they also forget, it is mentioned in the commandment, in the sixth commandment, you shall not murder. Or law treat sah, you shall not murder. People forget that the religion came for peace. They did not come for terror and they did not come for fight. We, as a Muslim community, we live it every day. On September 7th, four days ago, a mosque in Tennessee, he received a threat, a threat of a bomb that was going to be explode exactly on the September 11, the same time, the same second, the Twin Tower were hit. We as a Muslim community, we still live September 11. But there is always hope, and we have seen the good. We should not let ourselves down. We always think about God, that there is God, and God is always with people of faith and people of peace. A friend of mine, he's a funny guy in our community, always still jokes. He called me. And as an imam, you have to take every call as serious call. He called me, said, Imam, have you heard what happened to a Muslim person in New York? I said, what happened? He said, he saw a lady, a, a poor old lady, and the dog was attacking her, and he tried to defend her with all his force. He killed the dog. Then a journalist came and said, oh my God, look at this. 
a local hero, I'm gonna write tomorrow, a local hero killed a dog and saved the life of the innocent lady. He said, not, I'm, I'm not local, I'm not from New York. He said, okay, don't worry. I will say an American hero killed a dog and saved the life of an innocent old lady. He said, I'm not American, I'm not American, don't try that. He said, where you are from? He said, I'm from Egypt. He said, you are Muslim? He said, I'm a Muslim. He said, okay, fine. Next day, the news came. A Muslim terrorist killed an innocent American dog. <laughs> we have seen the God, the dog, the good. A friend of mine, his name is Ashraf, and he graduated about 15 years ago from Ohio State University from journalism. And he was an athlete, and he was working in his time as a firefighter. He was called in Washington, D.C. For days and days and days, he worked very hard to find innocent people under rebel, to clean the area, to remove the rebels, and hundreds of firefighters were working there. In the middle of that hard work, he heard another firefighter next to him curse Muslims. He stopped and looked at him and said, I'm a Muslim. The other firefighter was shocked. I have no idea what was in his mind and I have no idea what is in Ashraf's mind. But all I know that his presence and my presence will show the strength of this country, which is our unity, and our unity is our strength, that no single terrorist can take it away from us. We together are working harder for justice. We together are working harder for harmony, showing our nation resilient spirit and the strength of character. May Allah bless all of you. Amen. Of all the memories of 9-11, I remember the dust. I remember the dust. Everywhere, the dust. And out of the dust ran people to church, synagogue, and mosque, and fell on their knees, for they had no other place to go. All faiths experienced crowds normally given to the high holy days. But all were there. And as the dust settled, attendance in worship subsided quite rapidly. I'm speaking as a Protestant minister. And then came the time that we had to write in the dust how we will respond to such a monstrosity. We had to ask what we will make of what's left 
in the dust of 9-11. I remember the story of a little boy who was going uh, to his uh, kindergarten class with his parents. They had a craft time, and he had made something for both of them. Made for his father a little cup, a little ceramic cup, one of those things that are very precious to parents. And he was carrying it home for his father. He stumbled, it fell, it broke into a thousand pieces. The kid started crying uncontrollably. And his father said to him mistakenly, he says, son, don't worry, it doesn't matter. Don't worry, it doesn't matter. His mother rightly said, of course it matters. Then she said to her son, let's pick up the pieces and take them home and see what we can make of what's left. The word's for us. That is what 9-11 has called us to do, not only in the past, but in the present. Jews, Muslims, and Christians, all our traditions remember these words. God formed humans out of dust from the ground and blew into their nostrils the breath of life. The human became alive, a living soul. From dust we all came, and in the dust of 9-11, we have the up-to-us privilege of choosing what Words of peace that we will create in the dust that still remains. Some wrote in the dust with clenched fist, locked jaw, and an inability to entertain the notion that God is one, that there are many paths to the same God. They couldn't handle that. Some began screaming about God, and when people are screaming about God, they reveal to me a God I've never known, nor really want to know. After 9-11, the United States embarked on two wars that proved to be ill-considered, financially ruinous, and involved practices of which we need deeply to be embarrassed and demand repentance. And then some learned to talk about their faith as they never had before. Previously, for so many people in America, faith is a private thing, just don't talk about it, and we put it in that box, don't talk about it. But then the Jewish writer, author, Priscilla Warner from Larchmont Temple in Larchmont, New York, co-wrote a book called The Faith Club. She wrote it with two women, a Muslim and a Protestant. With them, many began listening to each other's experience of God. They learned that there is my truth, there is your truth, and there is the truth. And the truth we all seek is only found in community with one another, never in isolation. So let us today, right here, write a new chapter in the dust of 9-11. Let us be the ones that we have waited for indeed. And under one roof on this day, Jew, Christian, Muslim, and other traditions let us sit together in silence. Let all of our coming together begin in silence. And then, as each are moved from the heart, let us share together those things that have given us grief. And you will find the common thread of the human family. All of our grief is the same. Let us share together the joys that are ours in our lives. We will find that our common thread are the joys that all of us share. And after all the sharing, we can leave for our homes with the memory of our common father, Father Abraham, and leave with gratitude for the many paths that all lead to the same God. May it be so. Amen.